hello hello my name is adele ashley and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and welcome if this is your first time i am super excited to be chatting with you guys today about all the books that i read in september of 2024 and if you've been here before, you know that this is kind of a different format for these chats for me. Typically, I do it with my reading journal and you guys are really only just seeing my hand. But I realized that I don't really love that format. Um, I was doing it. Um, I still have the reading journal. I'm still filling it out. Um, but I realized that I kind of missed being like, face to face or I guess like screen to screen with you guys and chatting about the books that I read. Um, I also didn't get to chat about them as much as I might have wanted to because I was um, rushed and only had like a specific period of time and quite honestly I actually found them kind of boring. Like I will be very creative with my bullet journal and I get a lot of joy out of like designing things and doing the different spreads in there but I was not loving the reading journal. It was kind of boring and I didn't love like drawing things for the different books and everything else. I read a lot of sports romance. There's only so many times I could draw like a hockey stick or a baseball or what have you in there. Um, so we are back to the face-to-face -face, uh, reading recaps and I'm actually so excited to be back to this because I just, I just, I love it. I, I find it a little bit more enjoyable. And these are the type of videos that I typically watch when I'm watching people's reading recaps as well. So here we are. Um, for September, I admittedly did not read a lot of books. Um, I don't know. I had a lot going on both like professionally, personally. I just was like super, super distracted. I spent a lot of time working. Um, also spent a lot of time trying to figure out like what my next move was going to be in both my personal life as well as professional lives and reading just kind of fell to the wayside I watched a lot of tv um watched a lot of old tv I watched a lot of new things on on a netflix um most recently you know nobody wants this uh which I loved and felt just like a rom-com and like the intimacy experiment by Rosie Dannon which I'd highly recommend if you haven't read yet um but yeah I just didn't really feel the need to pick up a book when I do usually read which is like while I'm on the TTC like so commuting or you know at home on evenings weekends stuff like that I found myself reaching for TikTok which is totally fine like I would pull up my phone go to TikTok and just start scrolling and seeing what I'm doing so yeah it just didn't wasn't really the greatest for me um that being said I did read four books um I do know that I enjoyed <laughs> all four of the books that I read but I can tell you that two of them maybe one Two of, one or two of them. I actually barely remember a thing in the book other than the fact that I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a three star reading month for me. Everything was three stars. Nothing really like stood out or was exceptional or anything like that. But yeah, the books were just kind of there. Um, one of them, in fact, like looking at my reading tracker, I didn't even realize that I read this book in September. I thought I read it a couple months ago. I Again, like I said, very, very distracted, barely read for the month of September. Okay, so the first book that I read was uh, Fall With Me by Becca Mack. It's part of the Playing For Keep series. It's book four. Um, I previously read books one to three and it is, uh, you can see my thoughts on all three of those books. I had lots of them um, in the volume one first one in my books I read because of TikTok series um but yeah I dove into book four it follows Jackson Riley and Lennon who we are both really introduced to in kind of like book two book three uh Lennon shows up in book three kind of towards the end um but essentially it is about them they have a one night stand and they are determined that they're going to leave it in the past uh so Jackson R Riley is really only known for three things like he's, he's a defenseman on the Vancouver Vipers hockey team so he is known for causing fights he is known for picking up women post game and then he's known for being like the world's best cat dad 
Um, and then relationships are not something that he has on that list at all. And then there's Lennon who is supposed to be on her honeymoon and she goes to this resort and she's all alone and single and she is stuck next to what she thinks to be like the surely tattooed man who has ran his date off the resort. So she absolutely hates Jackson. And when they end up running into each other at the hotel bar, they have a night of bickering and cocktails. And the next thing you know, she finds herself tumbling into bed with him and then sneaking up before the sun comes up. She has her plan that she's going to start her new life in a new city and is going to be great. She has a new job, except the job is with the Vancouver Vipers as their new photographer. And on her very first day, she looks up and there is a defenseman scowling at her from across the room. And of course, that person is Jackson. So, so you know, it's a good thing that neither of them are looking for anything serious. Jackson may not be used to falling, but he, if he's going to, he refuses to go alone. And if he falls, he wants Lennon to fall with him. So I found this really fun. It's very angsty. It's again, another book that really centers around found family um, and Lennon surrounding herself with people who are supportive of, of her. And same thing with Jackson as well. Um, Jackson's whole thing is that he's not really I think to a certain degree he feels like he's not like lovable um or that like people don't want him to be part of a group um so he finds that um with the vancouver vipers and the family and everything else and it's just like really fun read um it's kind of like all i can say i do remember very specifically there was a moment where i was reading this and i was like is lennon supposed to be black because she would talk about things that are so like kind of like ingrained into like blackness um like she talked about tying her hair um at one point he buys like silk pillowcases and sheets which is like i know other curly haired girls do this as well but like we use silk pillowcases to protect our hair and our curls and tie our hair and stuff like that um and i think what really started cluing me into the like oh this is this is interesting is they talked about how like how in depth her hair care routine is and how it's like a three to four hour ordeal when she washes her hair which I relate to like so deeply it takes me so long to wash my hair and make sure that it looks good and everything else and you have to use like you have like all your little potions of like products that you move together to make it work so I was like oh I think she's black um which kind of was like a nice little revelation and then a little bit further into the story I got confirmation that she is actually um she's biracial um which was kind of like nice to see um I think Jackson does some really sweet things to her like when he shows up at her family's place I was like swooning kicking my feet like it was absolutely adorable um as well as like just her relationship with the rest of her family his relationship with her family as well um and of course always with these like connected standalones kind of um getting to like a little bit of an update on characters from previous books I still wish Carter um was non-existent I still wish that he learned how to speak without having food in his mouth all the time. Um, I think that's always going to be kind of one of my qualms with Becca Mack's novels is the fact that she has so much like character speaking with food in their mouth. Like that's like almost a character trait of them. And I don't really love it. I think it's very weird. Um, but overall, it was a good book. Um, I do think it could have been edited down a bit. I've seen the book in store and like she's thick um, and I think they could get rid of some of those um, chapters and skim it a little bit but overall it was like a three-star read for me. I enjoyed it so I can't really complain about that. 
Um, after that, I read The Blonde Identity by Ali Carter, which I absolutely loved. Um, Ali Carter actually wrote some of my favorite, like, middle grade YA books. Like, I, hook, line, and sinker, loved the Gallagher Girl series um, about spies. I loved the Embassy Row ones about the girl who was, like, living in another country but was, like, running through like embassy row essentially and like being like oh today i'm in japan today i'm in canada like because she goes through the different embassies and like uncovers things in this foreign country um i was so obsessed with the heist society series um about like the the teenage thief um and like con artist like I loved it so when I saw that Ali Carter wrote an adult novel I was like I need to read this um it came out a while ago I've had it sitting in my back pocket for a while and I pulled it out um and I loved it it was exactly everything that I loved about like those children books aged up just a little bit um I want to say it's still like closed door like she does have like a bit of a romantic relationship and everything that is explored a bit more than in previous books but the blonde identity was perfect so essentially it is about it's like a fast-paced road trip rom-com um about a woman with amnesia who discovers she's the identical twin sister of a rogue spy and it must team up with the rugged grumpy operative to stay alive it's the middle of the night in the middle of Paris and a woman just woke up with no memory. She only knows three things for certain. One, she has a splitting headache. Two, the hottest guy she has probably ever seen is standing over her telling her to run. And three, people keep trying to kill her. So she doesn't know who or why, but when she sees footage of herself fighting off a dozen men, there's only um, one explanation. Obviously, she's a spy. Um, except according to Mr. Hawkeye, she's not. She's a spy's identical twin sister. And too bad the only person who knows she's not the woman they're looking for is this very grouchy, very sexy, it's very special, very secret agent who agrees to help her disappear. But that's easier said than done when, when a criminal organization wants you dead and every intelligent service in the world wants you caught. Luckily, no one is looking for a pair of lusik newlyweds on their honeymoon. And soon they're lying their way across Europe, dodging bullets and faking kisses as they race to unravel a deadly conspiracy and clear her sister's name. But with every secret they uncover, the truth shifts until she no longer knows who to trust. The twin sis she can't remember or the mysterious man she can't let herself forget. So, like I said, this was fun. It got a lot better and more like action-packed towards the end. Um, and I really liked the dynamic between our two main characters. Um, I do wish there was a little bit more of a backstory on like who was chasing them like so the main conflict like what exactly was happening there and why um as well as their lives like I wanted to know way more information about these two women why they were like separated why she could not remember her like I feel like it wasn't resolved and like I said off the top I September was a fever dream for me. So this might have been explained and I just didn't retain the information. But I feel like we just kind of glossed over the fact that she has a twin sister that she like kind of didn't know about but kind of did. I I don't know. Um, I just wanted more. Like how did one become a spy? Um, that being said, it was a three-star read for me. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I highly recommend it if you haven't already for like a really fun quick read um yeah it was just kind of like and especially if you liked uh Allie Carter's previous novels as a kid like if you loved Gallagher Girls High Society Embassy Row I highly recommend um The Blonde Identity it was nice to kind of like dive back into that world and see or dive back into Allie Carter's world and kind of see what it's like it's like a little nice little warm hug it was nostalgic for me I guess you could say after that, I also read um, All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. So this book I actually started in August. Um, it was my book club pick for September. I got lots of advance warning that I needed to start it early because I'm notoriously the book club member who starts the book like the day before and just powers through it for the meeting. Um, but I started it and like I could not... I, 
took me so long to get into this book and then also I discovered like to even finish it. So and I was excited for it. Um, Chris Whitaker wrote We Begin at the End as well which I haven't read yet but I was super excited and it's on like my TBR list because the premise of it just seemed so great. So um, all the colors of the dark I was like okay like we could do this. Um, it just it's a really long book. It has like 50 something chapters in it or a hundred and something I don't know and it's a lot happens so you have to be like it's very character driven it's told from multiple different point of views multiple different timelines it kind of jumps all over the place i found at times that like you're hearing about one story over here and then you jump to this other story over here and you're like how are they connected so it was a lot um and essentially it is a book about um and i really have to read the synopsis for this because i don't think i could like properly describe this book um, but it's a soaring thriller and an epic love story that spans decades. 1975 is a time of change in America. The Vietnam War is ending. Muhammad Ali is fighting Joe Frazier. And in a small town of Montclair, Missouri, girls are disappearing. When the daughter of a wealthy family is targeted, the most unlikely hero emerges. Patch, a local boy with one eye who saves the girl and in doing so leaves heartache in his wake. Patch and those who love him soon discover that the line between triumph and tragedy has never been finer and that their search for answers will lead them to truths that could mean losing one another. A missing person mystery, a serial killer thriller, a love story, a unique twist on each, Chris Whitaker has written a novel about what lurks in the shadows of obsession and the blinding light of hope. So I guess in a nutshell, it's really just a story it's not just the story of tragedy but also what happens after a tragedy and it works better if you know what to expect so it's not a traditional mystery thriller it's a very slow slow character driven drama i really liked the two main characters of like saint and patch i thought they were very um well thought out they were complex they were very human um there's also the fact that like Patch is one-eyed is very much like not used as a disability. It's just like he has one eye. Um, it's a big part of his persona. Like it's just, it's there. Um, it has an excellent start. It has a really great ending. Um, I did find like the middle of the book drags, which is what kind of stumped me and my book club with it like we were supposed to talk about this book in September and we are actually talking about this book like next week so like when you guys are seeing this it's gonna come out on um Sunday like October 4th or 5th I think um or 6th we're actually not talking about it until October 9th so we literally had to have a conversation about like I think we need to push this book to next month because none of us got through it all of us were kind of like struggling with the middle of it it just kind of like there's so much that's happening but like none of it really seems relevant to the story while you're in it which makes it difficult to like continue reading um that being said it is actually relevant it's actually very well done and it's hard because like i said it, it really is the pacing of the novel is just erratic it's very fast at first very slow and then speeds up again and then like kind of goes medium and then slow and then back to fast like you're just jumping all over the place um but i liked it um i probably will pick up we begin at the end still and go into it knowing that this is going to be a little bit of a longer read for me. I'm not going to bang this out in a weekend per se. Um, but yeah, I think it's such a beautiful book and I would recommend it. So still a three star read for me um, because it what didn't like absolutely wow me. Like I'm not like shouting it from the rooftops for everyone to uh, read, but I did love it. So three stars. The final book that we I read was The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. I was super excited for this book um, because the last thing he told me by Laura Dave absolutely like blew me out of the park. Like I absolutely loved this book. I remember finishing it and texting my mom who had already read the book and was like this book is insane. I love it. Um, you don't think that you know what the last thing he, I think you know what the last thing he told you was and 
it's really not. So I was excited to pick up the night we lost him and it had me hooked in the same way that the last thing he told me did. So essentially it's about two estranged uh, siblings who discover that their father has been keeping a secret from them for over 50 years and one that may have been fatal. So Liam Noon was many things to many people. To the public, he was an exacting self-made hotel magnet fleeing his past. To his three ex-wives, he was a love he was a loving, albeit distant, family man who kept his finances flush and his families carefully separated. And to Nora, he was a father who often loved her from afar, notably a cliffside cottage perched on the California coast from which he fell to his death. The authorities have ruled this death accidental, but Nora and her estranged brother Sam have other ideas. As Nora and Sam form an uneasy alliance to unravel the mystery, they start putting together the pieces of their father's past and uncover a family secret that changes everything. With Laura Dave's train wreck combination of soulful suspense and evocative family drama, The Night We Lost Him is a riveting page turner with a heartbreaking final twist you'll never see coming. So I loved it. Like I ate this book up from start to the finish. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. I wanted to know if Liam actually was killed or if he just like fell off the cliff. I wanted to know if he did, if he was killed, who did it? Why did they do it? What was the motive behind killing this? At one point I was like, surely it's Sam. I wanted this book to never end. Um, and like they say, it is heartbreaking at the end and it makes you think and it makes you like dive a little bit deeper. I just really, really enjoyed it and never wanted it to end. Like it was just the book that I needed, I think, um, in the moment. I, this is only the second Laura Dave book that I have ever read. Um, the Night We Lost Him being the first one and I thought the same thing about that book. Like it was such a good piece of fiction. Um, and it kind of makes me want to dive into more of her books just to see if they are the same, um, have the same sort of like feeling if, um, kind of like coming out of them as well. I just, I really enjoyed it. So highly recommend if you have not yet read it, adding uh, The Night We Lost Him as well as the last thing he told me to your list of books to read because they're really good to me. That essentially is all the books that I read through the month of September. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, October will be a little bit of a better reading month for me, but I am not putting any pressure on myself for that. I do know that I have a couple of things, like looking for it at the month, I have a couple of things that might make it a little bit difficult for me to really get into like reading a lot. Um, but you know what? If it's one book, it's one book. It's better than nothing. And even if it's nothing, it's, you know, it all comes out in the wash. Um, life has ebbs and flows to it. But yeah, that is kind of the end of everything. Please let me know if you've read any of these books um, or what book you think I should read next. I am still looking for books that start with the title V, I believe, as well as authors whose last name are V, kind of like the end of the alphabet, like X, Y, Z. Um, but yeah, that essentially is it. I will chat with you guys later. Um, Till next time, have a great day. Bye.